I want to introduce something that has become a very, very fundamental term both in interest-based negotiation and in positional bargaining. And that is the term of BATNA, or best alternative to negotiated agreement. BATNA is an acronym, but people use it as if it were a word. Um, so familiarize yourself with it, and I'll explain what that means. Um, when you're negotiating with someone about something, chances are that you have alternatives with other people outside the room, meaning that, sure, you could seal a deal with the person you're negotiating uh, with now, but you might also be able to go negotiate with someone else and uh, receive the same object or the same value or the same item from them uh, uh, through a different negotiation. For example, if I'm buying a, a, a used car from someone and I, you know, and we're, we're, we're discussing the price of a Ford Focus, so I could uh, say, okay, you know what, I'm leaving this negotiation and what do I have out away from the table? I have another negotiation with another car salesman for another Ford Focus. So in every negotiation, I have alternatives which are things I can do on my own outside of the negotiation. I don't need one car salesman's agreement in order for me to go and talk to another car salesperson. So this is something I can do on my own. So my alternatives uh, are, are basically things I can do if I decide to put this negotiation on ice. Now, uh, in most negotiations, we have, um, we have many alternatives. Some of them are desirable alternatives and some of them aren't so desirable alternatives. For example, when we're uh, negotiating with our boss for a raise, um, one alternative we have is we could always quit and go work somewhere else. That might be a very desirable alternative if the uh, alternate place really exists and if they're offering us a lot more money, et cetera, et cetera. It might not be a desirable alternative if we're not so sure it exists or if they're offering low salaries. So alternatives don't necessarily mean that we can just go out and do anything, but it does mean that we have choices, we have a range of choices, including the negotiation we're taking uh, part in, and, uh, and we need to choose from all of these alternatives, we need to choose what will serve us best. Now, a BATNA is a best alternative. The best alternative is the one that we zoom into in our negotiation uh, analysis. We're negotiating over the price of, uh, of, a, of a 2010 Ford Focus. If we would set this negotiation outside, and I'd say, you know what, I'll be back in a while. And I would go out and I would talk to this car dealership about that for a Ford and a different car dealership about a different Ford and a third car dealership about a different Ford. Then what I have now is I have three alternatives. We're not in this game to gather as many alternatives. In the end, we're only going to buy one car. So it's not so important to have a gazillion alternatives. What is important is to identify which of these alternatives is the best one. Because that is our benchmark for many things. So what we're going to try and do is we try and understand which of these uh, three Ford Focuses is our best Ford Focus to negotiate over and buy. And then that becomes our BATNA. So if our BATNA, our best alternative to a negotiated agreement with car, car person over here is buying a Ford Focus from car dealership number four over there, then we now know. If this deal doesn't work out, this is what's in the wings. So this concept of BATNA, we've demonstrated, um, we've demonstrated how it works uh, in negotiation. Most of our examples so far have been how it works in positional bargaining, but it also works in interest-based negotiation. Um, especially Fisher and Urey recommend that the BATNA be a way that uh, you avoid giving in to power. Um, they, when someone tries to squeeze or to, to, to demand just a little more out of you and you can just say, kind of use your BATNA as a shield, why should I do that? 
I can do better elsewhere. I mean, you know, why, why would I give you what you want when I could do better elsewhere? Help me understand what you're offering and maybe sweeten the deal a little. Um, they also recommend that you use your batna in that way instead of applying direct power, which is kind of a no-no in the way interest-based negotiation sees things. You, you don't apply direct po power with a threat or with an ultimatum, but with sharing your batna by saying, look, I'd really love to do business with you, but Tony down the block has offered me the car for less, and I think we could come to a deal that would be, sacri uh, you know, that would be um, beneficial to us all, but obviously I'm not going to take a deal that doesn't work for me. So let's sit down and really talk about what's important to us. So that's how BATNA might be used in interest-based negotiation.